What is going on internet? My name is Lou and I make Linux and Android videos and I put them on the internet. And uh, today's video is going to be about um, how to optimize your solid state drive uh, under Linux. So first thing I want to say is for those of you who watched my last video know that I had uh, a pretty bad case of the flu for pretty much like the last week and a half. Um, because I'm the luckiest person in the world, um, at the end of the flu, my allergies started. So if I sound a little congested, a little stuffed up, um, it's because I am, and I'm still sick. So just want to apologize if I sound extra extra geeky today and uh, nasally. Uh, maybe it'll make the, the video cooler. But anyway, um, so I upgraded my PC, oh, I don't know, what, like a month ago, a month and a half ago now. And there were two upgrades that I knew I wanted to do immediately, and that was... I wanted to upgrade my RAM. It came with 12 gigs. Uh, I wanted to upgrade to the motherboard's maximum, which is 16 gigs. And I wanted to upgrade my hard drive. So it came with a uh, Seagate 1TB 7200 RPM mechanical drive. Uh, I wanted to definitely make my boot drive or my operating system drive. Uh, I wanted to have it on an SSD. So I did a lot of research, and I final, uh, finally came down to the Crucial M4. It's 128 gigabyte SATA 3 SSD. Bang for, for the buck. It's amazing. A lot of good reviews. Really high performance ratings. Uh, I picked it up on Amazon for like 165 bucks. I got it so much cheaper. The Newig was selling it. I opted to go for the one day shipping. And after all was said and done, I paid like $180, um, including one day shipping. So um, right now I've, I've got the 16 gigs of RAM and I've upgraded to my SSD. Um, so for those of you who are thinking about getting an SSD drive or already have one, there are certain things that you need to do under Linux to really optimize the performance on this SSD. So, you know, if, if you get a solid state drive and, you know, you just pop it in your computer, install the operating system, um, it's going to run just fine. However, if you really want to get the maximum performance, uh, there's just a few things you got to do. Okay, so first thing you have to do is what I would recommend go to the uh, manufacturer's website, in my case it was crucial, um, make sure that the firmware is up to date on the drive. Uh, in my particular case, there was a firmware update that came out mid to late January, so I knew that my drive um, probably didn't have that firmware update. So I downloaded an ISO image, loaded it onto a CD, uh, when I installed the drive, um, booted off of the disk, up, updated the firmware, and I was good to go. I recommend doing this first before trying to load your operating system and migrating all your data um, because if anything goes wrong in the um, in the firmware update, you know, you just spent all that time for nothing or could lose data. So step one, I would say, is uh, update your firmware. Step two is enable, in order to take advantage of trim support, you want to make sure you go into your computer's BIOS and change the SATA mode to AHCI, okay? Uh, if you've got a modern motherboard or uh, you know a pre-configured system that's come out within the last like two years, your SATA mode is probably already set to AHCI mode. But if yours is set to IDE, make sure to set it to AHCI, okay? So update your firmware and make sure your SATA mode is AHCI. All right, so I'm going to trust that you guys can, can handle that. Next thing we have to do, uh, really two things. One is we need to edit our FSTAB um, file so that when certain parts of the file system are mounted, they're mount mounted with certain options. And then the next thing we have to do is change the I.O. scheduler in the kernel. Okay, and we'll get into these things as they go along. Now, I'm going to give you guys kind of very brief, short uh, definitions of some of the terms I'll be using um, today. Definitely, you know, hit up. I, I would say Arch Linux's wiki has been the best resource I've found to optimize a solid state drive under Linux. So I definitely would uh, search through Arch's wiki and you can get a lot more detailed information on some of the things I'll be talking about today. But I'm going to show you guys how to, to edit these files and get you rock and rolling with a highly optimized um, uh, solid state experience under Linux. Okay, so first things first. Let's take a look at what your FSTAB file probably looks like. Now I'm running Ubuntu 11.10, but here's a copy of my FSTAB file, okay? Now, <clears throat> one thing I should also mention, when you format this disk and go to install the operating system, um, I used ext4, okay? Now ext4 is pretty much 
um, the default for, uh, file system format that most distros use. Okay, but if I always do a manually, uh, I manually um, make a custom uh, partitioning scheme for my systems, so I never go by the defaults. Um, so you you want to make sure you're using ext4. It's superior to the other file system uh, options that are out there in terms of performance. Um, now, as far as how you partition this, I've got 16 gigs of RAM. I'm never gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna run out of RAM. I don't use a swap partition. Um, it's gonna give you a warning if you try to actually install without a swap partition. Just, you know, if you've got at least, I would say, you know, anywhere from probably eight gigs and higher, you're probably not gonna run the risk of running out of RAM. Um, uh, so, or memory, uh, on your system so I, I wouldn't bother with a swap it's not recommended to actually use a swap uh, partition on a solid-state drive in my case I use that one terabyte drive that my system had uh, as a storage drive if I really wanted a swap drive I could probably I could partition that um, that hard drive uh, to run swap off of it but it's not recommended uh, to write swap to the SSD I've got a boot partition and I've got a root file system partition and that's it um, my boot partition is 500 megabytes, my, and the rest of my drive is, uh, makes up the root file system. If you've got a, which, a popular partitioning scheme is to also have a separate home partition. If you do, um, that's fine. You'll mount that home partition with the same options we're going to be mounting the root file system partition that I have here in my uh, SDEB file. So this is what it looks like by default okay this is what your your uh, f-step file should look like by default we're going to be just adding a couple of options so when the system boots and it mounts all these different parts of your file system and mounts all these different partitions it's going to mount them with certain options to optimize again our solid state drive under linux okay so one word of caution um, maybe make a backup of this file. If you screw up the FSTAB file, your system will not boot properly. You'll have to boot into a recovery uh, console. You'll have to use something like Nano to edit that FSTAB file and correct all the errors, save it, and then reboot. You'll be fine. But it's easier to probably save a backup of this file. That way, if something goes wrong, again, you can boot into a recovery console, delete the FSTAB file, rename the backup, and then reboot and you'll be good to go. Um, so when editing this, please um, make, take special attention to uh, be very careful on how we edit this file because it can screw a lot of things up, okay? So as per usual, in the blog post below, um, I am going to be including a link to, um, uh, in the video description below, rather, I'm going to be including a link to a blog post. They'll have any of the terminal commands that we're going to be doing in this video, so you can simply just copy and paste them uh, and be on your way. Okay, so let's, I'll show you guys how to edit the fstep file. Let's open up a new terminal window here. And um, you can do this in Nano if you really wanted to. Most people are probably going to be more comfortable doing this in a text editor like gedit. So that's what I'll do today. And you know what? for this demonstration let me uh get this going too okay so it's sudo space forward slash i'm sorry sudo g edit space forward slash uh etsy slash f stab okay and then all you're gonna do is hit enter now it's gonna ask you for your password all right okay so um now we've got my fstab file open here. Now let's compare with the fstab file that I had previously. All right. So as you can see, all right, the differences here is this option, the no A time, no DIR A time, discard, okay? And notice each one is separated by a comma. Okay, um, no A time and no DIR A time. By the way, if you're using the no A time option, it's in, it, no DIR A time is included. Um, I came, I did some more research and actually found this out recently. I could probably just remove that from my SDEB file. Um, essentially what no A time does 
And again, I haven't. We don't have to touch our our boot partition here. Just the file system, root file system partition, and that's indicated by just the forward slash. Um, no wait time essentially limits the amount of writes to disk. Okay, this increases performance, and it also increases the longevity of your device. If you're limiting the amount of writes to your device, you're increasing the longevity of your hardware. Okay, um, and what discard does, discard actually enables that trim support I talked about. Again, you need the corresponding BIOS option. Um, you need to make sure you enable AHCI mode for your SATA mode and um, you're gonna be good to go there, okay? So again, all you've gotta do from the blog post is simply just copy and paste this entry, make sure you put your cursor right in front of the E, copy and paste, and save the file, and then close it out, and you're done. Now that your FSTAB entry will be complete, okay? Next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is uh, you're gonna to wanna to go over to that blog post, we'll go there now, uh, I haven't actually posted that blog post uh, yet, but I have a little cheat sheet here. Now we want to figure out what I/O scheduler we're using. Okay, now we can do one of two things: we can recompile a whole kernel if you want to do that. I suggest doing it down the road at some point. Um, you know, customize it to your specific hardware. And I've got uh, kernel videos, so if you want to check out how to do that, by all means, go ahead and check out my kernel videos. However, if you don't want to have to recompile the whole kernel just to change the I/O scheduler, um, we can do it a different way. First thing we're going to do is we want to we want to see what I/O scheduler we have now. So we're going to cat that out and um, just copy and paste what uh, the um, the from the blog post here the command that I have and hit enter. And as you can see, the only two I/O schedulers I've enabled in my custom kernel is noop okay and deadline now the one that you've got running by default is going to be in brackets so I'm using deadline um, I've tested both noop and deadline and I, I found that deadline pr uh, provides um, higher performance than noop does um, per my benchmarks but um, essentially okay uh, the Linux kernel comes with the CFQ or the completely fair queuing scheduler uh, by default so uh, this scheduler is not really optimized for solid state drives or flash memory. What we want to use is either Noop or Deadline. Now, essentially, Noop really, it's not really an I.O. scheduler at all. It, uh, it really almost um, negates the I.O. Uh, scheduler. But anyway, um, what they are is they're, they're referenced uh, oftentimes as FIFO schedulers or first in, first out. Okay? What that means is it addresses the processes as they're received by the system in the order that they're received by the system okay um, so what I like about deadline is deadline puts priority on the read processes okay so you want to and again it's um, but it still goes by that first in first out principle okay these will yield you much higher performance than um, the other schedulers such as CFQ um, or BFQ even. Those are made for more rotational disks or mechanical drives, okay? So I know here I'm using Deadline, all right? And I'll show you guys how I'm using Deadline. What we want to do is we want to change that scheduler. Most likely the one that you have is going to be CFQ. We want to change it from CFQ to Deadline. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the same process. I'm going to use a text editor and we're going to edit a file in Etsy um, called rc.local. All right. Um, the way we're going to do that is sudo, okay, gedit space forward slash uh, Etsy space rc.local. Uh, Head enter. Here's my rc.local file. Now, you're going to see this line here in my rc.local file, the one that says echo, deadline, so and so on, uh, so on and so on. I actually have that line here in the blog post as well. By default, this line here is not in there. You're going to see this line here where it says uh, it's got the pound symbol. By default, this script does nothing. It'll have a, a, a space and it'll say exit zero. What you're going to do is you're just going to return twice after the word nothing. Copy and paste this line. Uh, return one more time. Make sure there's a space between this particular line and exit zero. And um, save the file and, and close it out. 
That is going to basically um, run when your computer boots. It's going to change the I.O. scheduler to whatever one you have listed right here. In this case, it's deadline. Okay, so we've changed our f-stab to mount our file system with no a time and discard okay that no a time again limits the amount of writes to disk and discard enables trim support and we've now uh, gone in and edited our rc.local file to uh, have the system boot with the deadline io scheduler with all of these things combined you're going to provide a superior um, experience as far as the performance of your solid state drive under linux is concerned uh, and that's it guys pretty simple um, these simple tips really make a big difference. Um, my next video is going to be on benchmarking your solid state drive under Linux, which is pretty fun. You can mess, excuse me, you can mess around with all these different options and then run benchmarks afterward and see which one makes, you know, if there's really a difference that's made. Um, so you can actually have that scientific proof that you know those certain mounting options or that certain IO scheduler provides better performance for you okay so hopefully you guys found this video helpful if so please uh, give me a thumbs up give me a like uh, favorite whatever you guys want to do um, and stay tuned for how to benchmark a solid state drive under Linux until next time guys as always you're awesome and I will talk to you guys later